Illinois Network for Pretrial Justice says that McHenry County State's attorney is spreading misinformation about the end of money bond. Welcome in. It's Illinois in Focus Daily. I'm Greg Bishop. Yesterday, I shared a conversation I had with uh, McHenry County State's attorney Patrick Keneally who uh, told us that in the year's worth of data he's collected, the end of cash bail in Illinois has been a, quote, abject failure. Well, I did reach out to get some reaction from the Illinois Network of Pretrial Justice, and they share their thoughts. It is Illinois in Focus here with America's Talking Network. Be sure to get the live program each and every weekday morning and get the podcast anywhere you get podcasts, unimpeded, uninterrupted with Illinois in focus and uh, get the headlines at thecentersquare.com. So I'll share with you a bit of what um, uh, the Illinois Network for Pretrial Justice had to say uh, about uh, McHenry County State's Attorney Patrick Keneally. Uh, but just to revisit uh, some of what, and I'll go kind of back and forth here between what Keneally had to say and what the uh, Illinois Network for Pretrial Justice had to say. Uh, so when we uh, shared that conversation with Keneally, he talked about uh, how uh, the Safety Act, the Pretrial Fairness Act, which ends cash bond across the state for certain offenses somebody may face as a criminal defendant, uh, and uh, ultimately saying that, hey, if this individual gets arrested, they'll be processed, but they'll be let out of jail um, awaiting trial. While some offenses that people can be charged with, they would be held by the judge without any option for cash bail. So there is no more cash bail in the state of Illinois. Uh, so Keneally said that uh, he's actually seen uh, a certain section of the uh, criminal defendant space uh, seeing an increase in crime. OK, how many people released on bail recommitted an offense um, while they were on bail during that term? And then we say, OK, how many people on pretrial release after the Safety Act committed an offense during that term? Uh, and what we found was that there was a 30% increase in crime by those on pretrial release compared with those on cash bail. So, uh, Keneally talking about uh, the number of individuals who uh, are, you know, committing crimes on pretrial release compared to those who were on cash bail committing crimes. Uh, now, the McHenry County State's Attorney sharing that data only out of McHenry County. Uh, the statement from the uh, Illinois Network for Pretrial Justice says that uh, the press release from the McHenry County Jail says that there's a 30% increase in crime committed by those on pretrial release compared to those on cash bail. They say that this statistic is misleading. The actual difference between the number of people who were accused of new offenses under pretrial release versus people released after paying money bond is 17. And again, this is just in McHenry County. They say it's only because the total number of people accused of new offenses is small that the percentage increase seems large. In the same way, an increase from one person to three could be called a 200% increase. Keneally knows that, which is why he used the percentage only include the number in a footnote. Uh, goes on to say that uh, Keneally claimed the jail population had an increase. Here's Keneally talking about that in the conversation I had with him. Uh, the uh, the other day. Uh, what we actually found is that the jail population has increased in McHenry County. So on the eve of the Safety Act, on September 17th, 2023, there were 204 people in the McHenry County uh, jail. And on September 15th of 2024, uh, which is exactly one year later, accounting for the leap year, there were 216 people in the McHenry County Jail. So uh, again, he says, and he gave us the numbers, there was an increase, but the uh, Network for Pretrial Justice says, that's just 12 people representing an increase of 5.5%. Uh, so ultimately, uh, the Network for Pretrial Justice seems to be saying that he's conflating data, he's um, uh, inflating data by using percentages. Uh, then you had the uh, number that uh, Keneally gave us of 280% increase of uh, those not appearing for their hearings. And this is how the Network for Pretrial Justice counters that. They say that uh, Keneally further claims there's a 280% increase in failures to appear, which sounds alarming. If it were true, they say, in reality, failure to appear warrants have actually decreased by 42% in McHenry County, dropping from 1,055 to 610. Warrants can be issued when a judge decides it's necessary to bring someone into court because they will not voluntarily return. Instead of acknowledging the significant reduction in FTA warrants, Keneally attempts to conflate two different things, warrants and summonses. 
well, if somebody doesn't arrive to their scheduled, uh, you know, uh, hearing, a criminal defendant, uh, they didn't arrive. Uh, should they include the number of warrants that went out, which is a, you know, certain type of step that could be taken? Or is Keneally conflating things by uh, only talking about those who simply failed to appear? Uh, so the Network for Pretrial Justice continues saying regarding the increased use of FTA summonses, there is no context provided to allow the reader to understand whether multiple summonses were issued in the same case or how many people return to court after receiving a summons. Most people who miss court return voluntarily when given the chance, so the increased use of summonses is likely driving the decreased use of warrants. Furthermore, judges are never required to issue a summons instead of a warrant. Judges are thus choosing to give people the chance to return to court voluntarily, reducing unnecessary issuances of warrants and wasted court and law enforcement resources. So they don't necessarily deny that that's the case of 280% increase of people failing to appear, but they say there's a difference between failing to appear and somebody having a warrant against them for failure to appear. Uh, so uh, is it conflation? Is it uh, an inflation? Uh, but also uh, they go on further to talk about how uh, they believe that the Pretrial Fairness Act uh, shifts uh, the the justice system uh, shift towards more just and equitable pretrial system, one that no longer ties freedom to financial status. Despite opponents like Keneally spreading misleading narratives, they said data shows that Illinois' new system is working. So uh, there you go. There's the reaction from uh, the proponents of the Pretrial Fairness Act as part of the Safety Act and uh, how they say that those opponents are inflating and conflating numbers. Uh, but ultimately, you've got uh, Keneally uh, talking about the reduction of the victim's compensation fund, which I don't think the pretrial fairness group uh, touched that portion of Keneally's criticism. Uh, but there's another way, Keneally said, that uh, they could take this uh, and uh, giving judges more discretion. Of the Safety Act, which is if you want to get rid of cash bail, that's fine. And I guess we could all sort of adjust to that. But what you can't do is say that is 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 uh, determine an, an outcome before it has a chance to be adjudicated and argued. What you can't do is say it doesn't matter who this person is or the risk that they pose to the community. If they've committed X crime, they're automatically released because that's just a, that's just an entirely arbitrary decision. And the judge, the whole point of a judge is to weigh the facts and make a just determination for the communities that elected them. And they are being deprived of that uh, in many instances under the Safety Act. But the pretrial fairness group says that uh, judges preside over these hearings and they get to decide who's detained for pretrial and who is released. Not the last time we hear about this. We'll definitely cover it all with Illinois in Focus daily, each and every weekday morning with America's Talking Network. Get the podcast anywhere you get podcasts.